when Sheila and I came back home from Bible college, we didn't know what, where we was going. We just knew that there was a call on our life and that we were uh, called a pastor. We knew that. And, uh, and the reason I know that, God confirmed that on many different occasions. And uh, what one, uh, one morning in the class, we had a visiting uh, a teacher to teach, come in and, and minister. And he was recruiting there at the Bible college. He was recruiting uh, uh, people to go with him to the Philippines. And, uh, you know, what happened, they, would, they had a, uh, in this big ship, and in the hull of that ship, they'd have material to build, uh, build uh, churches. <coughs> so what would happen, they would go to the, uh, they'd stop at an island and build a church and deposit a pastor. Go to the next island, build a church, deposit a pastor in the, in the Philippines. And so I thought, praise God, that's, that sounds great. That's exactly what I'd love to do. But I said, Lord, if you send us to the Philippines, hey amen, you're going to have to tell Sheila that too. <laughs> amen. And the Lord spoke to me, you know, and said, no, I'm not called you, but there'll be people that you, you pastors that will go to the Philippines amen. and uh, to the mission field, but I've called you for this, uh, to be a pastor here. And so, uh, so we, I accepted that, amen, but I'm still not sure in my heart. And then that spring before we graduated, uh, we, uh, I knew that uh, it was, uh, God was dealing with me, but I had a, had a vision one night, uh, a night vision, and uh, the Lord told me, spoke to me again, amen, and it would take a long time to tell everything that happened that night, but uh, he said, uh, I've called you to pastor, and I want you to go pastor. So we got out of uh, school, and we came back to our hometown. And we didn't know where we were. I mean, we knew we were supposed to pastor, but we didn't have any flock. Amen. We didn't have any sheep. And uh, so we started a little Bible study in our house. Made some flowers, put them up on the post office and the grocery store and uh, the light pole. And, you know, wherever we could put a, put a flyer, we put a flyer somewhere just saying we got a Bible study. It gave my address and phone number and all that. And, and put it up down, and lo and behold, people started coming. Amen. We didn't even know people. We didn't know. brought them into our house, teaching them the Word of God. And then uh, the Lord opened the door for us to come here, to uh, come here to Decatur. The Lord spoke to us here, and here we are. Well, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I know that I've been called a pastor. That's the will of God. And so, uh, you know, we've started this church, and, but it seemed like things weren't happening. Things weren't, weren't clicking. Y'all, oh, excuse me just a minute. <coughs> Praise the Lord. See, I was praying as much for myself as I was you about the, about the sinus problems. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And anyway, so I, we we seen this, and uh, and we, we we came teaching healing, glory to God, God will to heal, and so we we got hooked up with another church down in Jasper, Alabama, and uh, and so we we started helping the pastor there. I worked as an associate there for just a short period of time, but uh, in that church they believed that God would heal, but not all the time, that God heals. You know, it's, you know, you never know how, how God would do it. But it seemed to me like more not didn't get healed than got healed. Amen. And it's because, you know, they believe that it wasn't God's will to heal everybody. And if you believe that it's not God's will to heal everybody, then the devil's going to beat up on you. Amen. Because he knows, he knows that, uh, he, he knows that you've got the door wide open. Amen. So I believe that it's God's will to heal everybody Amen. all the time. Yes. It's God's will every time. Every time. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's God's will. It's God's will. So I know it's God's will to heal. Praise God. And, uh, and we're going to continue to preach it and to teach it. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter if everybody falls over dead in a prayer line, we're still going to preach it. Amen. 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 
But, you know, they're, they're not going to fall over. They're going to get healed. That's right. Hallelujah. And the Bible says there in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. Hallelujah. So everybody knows that God is able. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we, either, we can ask or think. Well, the Lord shouldn't have put that in there if he didn't want me to believe it. Because I can believe it. I can think it. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Amen. Well, I can ask some big things, can't y'all? There, there's, there's some big things I, I can believe for. And so I'm believing for stuff all the time. Amen. You, you should never, you know, have a period of time that you're not believing for something. <coughs> so it's God's will to heal. Amen. And I know that. And so when we pray for people, we expect them to be healed. Amen. Amen. We expect them to be healed. And, uh, and I, I believe that pleases God. Amen. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so uh, Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do exceedingly. I like these adjectives, don't you? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even ask or think. Mm -hmm. So people know that he's able to do those things. But since it's not happening in their life, they must say, well, it must not be God's will. Right, right. My Lord. It must not be God's will because if it's God's will, I would have been healed. Yeah. Amen. No, God is not only able, but he's willing, praise God. Yeah. Now, here's the key. According to the power that works in you. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's the power. According to the power, there's no power there. You know, there's no manifestation. <coughs> Y'all, yeah, excuse me. No. Well, I got one. You got some? I got one in my pocket. You can just stick this in your jaw. See, the devil would like to stop me from saying anything or doing anything. But, right. Amen. I'm, I'm going to keep on keeping on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, praise the Lord. Amen. amen. It's God's will to heal. Amen. But it's according to the power that works in us. Yeah. Amen. According to the power that works in us. Well, what is that power? The gospel. Amen. Well, there's, uh, well, the Bible says how God anointed, in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, Holy Ghost and power, Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Right. Then the Bible says in, a, in Romans chapter 1, and verse 16, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To all that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Right. Amen. So praise the living God. It's the, the power. Amen. I think the power is the word. There's no word inside you. That's then right. nothing's going to happen. That's right. The gospel is the power That's of right. God. The gospel. <coughs> in the name of Jesus. Slap me. <laughs> I mean, so God, God. Yeah, that's right. Cough it up. But anyway, where was I? The gospel is the power. The gospel is the power of God. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. So that same power is the power that we received. How God anointed Jesus Christ to Nazareth, but God also anointed us with the same power. That's right. Those that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. That's right. Everybody say power. power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's you right. shall be witnesses unto me and to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other most parts of the, of the world. That's right. So we see the anointing that Jesus operated in. And then uh, throughout the Word of God... You see that word power all the time. Amen. But it's, it's the power of God. See, we know that God is able. <coughs> we know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So there's no word in there. There's no power in there. Amen. There's no word. There's no power. Praise God. So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all those that believe. So we know it's the Word of God. The power is the Word of God. You should receive power after that the Word of God is, after the Word of God has come upon you. And you should be witnesses unto me. That's right. 
Amen. So you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's like revelation knowledge, understanding the Word of God. Remember when you got baptized in the Holy Ghost, how the, the, the Scriptures began to come alive to you? I mean, it was amazing. You know, people say, well, I don't understand this, and I don't understand that. I don't understand the Word of God. Well, you know, at first, reading the Bible, I mean, it, it was difficult to, right. you know, think, dear Lord, I, I don't know that I never read through this. Amen? Because I couldn't understand it. But after you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, it seems like there's, that revelation is there. Amen? Amen. To receive. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the revelation knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I believe the revelation the power of the Word of God, amen, is the power. Yes. Is the power, uh, power of God. Praise God. So... Amen. The gospel is the power of God. <coughs> this, I, I did a couple bits sitting down there praising God. Amen. Praise the Lord anyhow. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So turn, turn with me in your Bibles over to 1 Peter or 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Jesus is Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. All right. Second Peter chapter 1. The Bible says in verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, according to the, the as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called that word knowledge. There, it really means exact knowledge. It's epinosis, and it means exact knowledge or revelation knowledge. Amen. So it's that revelation knowledge of God, yes. and you know we could have knowledge in our head, not have it in our heart. Amen. But when it becomes revelation to you, yeah. you know, then that's when things change. Right. You know, I, I remember the, the day that I got saved, you know, October 23rd, 1977. You know, Honky Blackwood was preaching. Amen. <laughs> Bug Rogers. <laughs> Amen. Was the pastor and he, they were pleading, for singing just as I am. Amen. We sang it four or five times, you know. And then I, I got saved. But the, the reason I got saved... I realized, or I had revelation, I had revelation that day that uh, if I died that day, I was going to hell. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I was going to hell. And, uh, and you know, and when you get that revelation, you'll, you'll try to correct it real soon. Right. Amen. But I, I really knew that I was going to hell. If I didn't make things right that day, it was like, you know, the Bible says God will not always strive with men. Amen. So I, I believe there's a point in our life, you know, God's done everything that he can do. And you still reject him, and then you, uh, you know, fall off into the, the devil's pit of hell. Amen. So God will deal with you and deal with you and deal with you and deal with you. But then one day, all of a sudden, revelation knowledge comes. Hey, I better get saved. Because, uh, you know, the, the gospel is the power of God. And so and the power of God was preached that day. Praise the Lord. And I want to say one thing about the Baptists. They know how to get people saved. Amen. Everybody say thank God for the Baptist. Amen. Amen. So uh, we, we, uh, our life changed that day. Amen. But the more we read the Bible and read the Bible, we didn't understand it until it became revelation knowledge to us. The day that we, we got uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Now, I know people, you know, didn't want to disagree with you about that, but I don't care. Amen. And I, I got a revelation. There's revelation, amen. And that, that day I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'd been on a business trip, come back home, and there wasn't anybody home, and I went into my living room. And I'd prayed all the way back from that business trip. And uh, we, we, uh, I went in my living room and knelt down by the couch, and I began to pray. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to, I'm, not, I'm, I ask, I'm asking you to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, I, and I know that everybody's baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaks with other tongues. So I'm not going to speak English again until I start speaking in other tongues. 
And so I asked you to baptize me in the Holy Ghost, and by faith I received, and I received the, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and then I just began to say a few letters, a few words, amen, a few words, and then all of a sudden something kicked in, praise God, and I was, began to speak fluently in other tongues. And I, I've been speaking in other tongues ever since, fluently. Not just a once in a while shundi, but I'm telling, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And we begin to sense that power, sense the power. And we, we, and we started that Bible study at our home. You know, there's always a place to preach. Amen. If you want to preach, you can't blame me on the preacher. Well, he never lets me preach. Well, go find you a light pole uh, and, and put, put a flyer on a light pole saying, I'm having a Bible study. Praise God. There'll be people come. Amen. There'll be people come just out of curiosity, if nothing else. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. So uh, we, we did that. Glory to God. And everything else was, was history. Mm-hmm. Everything else is history. Then God called me to preach. Hallelujah. No, no that, was that was before. That's right. But, but when he called me to preach, it was the same way. We were hungry. We were just so hungry for the things of God. Hallelujah. But it's the power. That's what, we're, that's what you need in order to receive. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above yes. all that we can even ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. If there's no power there, there's, not, there's nothing that God can reveal to you. Yeah. Amen? Because God will deal with you through the Word. Yeah. It's the Word. Thank God for the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, and, uh, you know, you might call us a, a Word church. So, I know some people do call us a Word church. Well, we are a Word church. Right. Amen? Because we put major emphasis. Our number one major emphasis is on the Word. Right. You know, thank God because the wonderful praise and worship. And I, I love it. Amen? I love men and all the praise team. I love it. But the, the number one thing is the Word. Right. Amen? Right. You know, you can, we can sing wonderful songs. and You know, the songs that we sing is gospel in those songs. Yes. Amen? But uh, we, we can uh, sing wonderful songs. Amen? But go out of here still defeated. Yeah. Amen? You know, when we learn things through the Word, I'm not knocking that. But it's the number one thing. Amen, that this church is noted for is the Word of God. Yes. Amen, the Word. It's the Word that sets us free. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love the praise and worship, but I love the Word. Amen, Amen. I, I, I want to be taught the Word of God. Amen. Because, see, there's things I don't know. There's things that you don't know. Praise God. So you, you make me study and dig in the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Dig in the Word of God. Get a new revelation. Can't wait to share it with you. Hallelujah. And so I get a revelation, I'm chomping at the bits, you know, when, when I get up here in the pulpit to, to share with you the revelation that I got. Hallelujah. Because the revelation I got made me free. I know to make you free. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. And so, it, it, but it's the gospel. Putting the word on the inside of you. The gospel means good news. Yes. Hallelujah. And if you haven't heard good news, then you haven't heard the gospel. Amen. I mean, the good news is, praise God, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Yes. The good news is that God meets all my need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The good news is that though, I, that though He was, he was, made, he was poor. made poor, even though I, I, He was made poor, I was made rich. Hallelujah. I knew, I knew that's the Word of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's the gospel. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the gospel. Praise amen. God. The gospel truth. Amen. This is the gospel truth. Amen. So the gospel is the power of God under salvation to, to those that believe. Praise God. So, uh, and when, uh, you know, there in Ephesians 3 and verse 20, the gospel is the power of God under salvation to all the, no, that's uh, Romans. But uh, in, uh, uh, what's that? Now, him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we even ask or think. Amen according to the power that works in us. So it's the power. See, and as you operate in the Word of God, the Word that you know, you operate in the Word that you know, and it, it becomes power. I mean, it produces power when you begin to act on it. You've got to act on the Word of God. You've got to put it to work. And if you don't put it to work, it's not going to, put, it's not going to be, benefit you anything. You hear, you know, to, uh, us teaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But if you don't, you know, seek the Holy Ghost, Praise God, he's not, going, he's not going to overtake you and overwhelm you. Amen. If you don't want him, he is a gentleman, and he'll, he'll, he comes 
he'll reveal to you things, amen, but you've got to have the want to. That's right. And if you, if you don't want it, you know, people say, uh, you know, I'm afraid that if I spoke in tongues, I'd be kicked out of my church. Amen. Well, you need another church anyway. Right. Amen. If you're going to be kicked out. But, but it's, uh, people will, uh, you know, say they believe, but to come down to it, do they really believe? Do they really believe? Over in uh, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, it says that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then thou shalt have good success. Yeah. When? After meditating the word, putting the word on the inside of it. This book of the law or the word of God right. shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it therein day and night. See, meditation has to, you know, you know, it has to be, you know, you, in your mouth, praise God, not only in your ears, but in your mouth. Hallelujah. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Amen. So you're talking the word. The, the word meditate means to mumble, means to utter. Amen. So as you meditate the word of God, by you see it in the word of God, you meditate on it, you mutter it, mumble it, mumble it. Amen. Amen. Uh, until you get a, a revelation of it. Yeah. Praise God. You get a revelation of it. Glory to God. Things begin to change. Amen. You begin to be a doer of the word. It says that you might be doers of the word. Yes. Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. That, that you might re that observe, if you observe to do, as you observe to do all that is written therein. Observe to do. So you just don't meditate the Word, but you observe to do whatever the Word of God says do. Amen. Amen. If the Word of God, you get a revelation that you're supposed to be doing something, then you'll do it. Right. Amen. You know, it's just like, like, uh, like tithing. Amen. You get a revelation of it. You know, you observe to do it. You see it in the Word of God and you do it. Right. You know, I don't want you to tithe just because I say it. Amen. I want you to see it in the Word of God. Amen. I want you to understand it. Praise God. Why you do it? I mean, I want you to get a hold of that. Amen. I don't want you to do it just because I teach it and preach it. But me teaching and preaching it will cause revelation to come. Right. Amen. Revelation will come to you. Amen. But as you hear, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Or just like uh, these signs you follow them to believe, they lay hands on the sick. Amen. You, you see, see that in the word of God? And you were looking for somebody to lay hands on. Amen. Isn't that right? I was in a meeting one time. Uh, Sheila and I, there was a tent meeting in Birmingham years ago. We just got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And uh, there, there was a Gary Wood Assembly of God years ago. And uh, many years ago. And uh, so they had all the preachers that was present that night. It was a big tent. I don't know how many people. To get up and we were to pray for the people. And so that's the first time I ever prayed for people. Amen. Laid hands on them. Because, I mean, we're brand new in this. And so we laid hands. I laid hands on this guy and he fell out. I thought, whoa, glory to God. That's fun. Do somebody else. Amen. Lay hands on them. Amen. And they fall out. Praise the Lord. And we never experienced that. I'd never seen that. I, I, that's totally something new to us. Amen. And so uh, praise God. You know, it's fun to work the Word of God. To operate the Word of God. Yeah, Hallelujah. And one time there was a, you know, we, we got back from Bible school and had the Bible study in, in our house. And uh, there was uh, this relative of Sheila's had a granddaughter that they said they believed she had a devil. And so they wanted me to come cast the devil out. Well, I never cast the devil out of anybody before. But I'm about to. Amen. But... Uh, <laughs> But anyway, so, so we go down there to their, their house and she was saying that she was Marie Antoinette, you know. And uh, she was reincarnated and she was, you know, I said, no, that's a devil. That's all that is. Amen. And, and so we prayed for her. Hallelujah. Cast the devil out of her. And, uh, you know, I didn't, we didn't see any immediate, immediate change, but I believe the devil had to go out of her. Yeah. Amen. Now, and other times, uh, casting the devil out of a place, we, uh, a man came by the church one day, and he, he wanted me to come and exercise 
you know, get the devils out of his house. He said, well, we got, we got devils in our house. And they, we need to get rid of them. Would you come and get rid of them? And, and, you know, and anybody can do this. I mean, just not the preacher. So I said, well, sure. I love casting out devils. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, so we, we went to the house, and he said, it's back there in that back room. So we go in there, and uh, as soon as we walked in that room, it was just a freezing chill. Goosebumps ran up and down my back, you know, and my neck. Amen. Yeah, yeah, there's a devil in that room. I could tell there was a devil in that room. And so we cast the devil out of that room, praise God, and, uh, and they were free from the devils. Amen. 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 The devil left, and they had their house back. Amen. Every time we go to... Uh, Go somewhere on the tree up and sleep in a bed in a hotel. So you don't know who slept in that bed the night before you did. Amen. We, first of all, look for bed bugs. <laughs> that is the truth. That is the truth. And I mean, because Pete got me onto that. He, he, he showed me how to do that. Amen. But, uh, amen. So, but, but I cast the devil out of those rooms. You know, and I call that room blessed. Because I'm going to be sleeping there for the next night or two or ever how long. And this room is blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. And any devils or demons that might be in this place has to go. Right. Amen. This, this room is sanctified and blessed by the kingdom of God. Yeah. You know, and I think that the next person that occupies that room, amen, the Spirit of God is going to touch them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. amen. So God is good, isn't He? Yeah. Amen. So... So the, and the word really works. The word really works. Glory to God. God is awesome. Amen. One, come here. Uh, uh, no. What? I want you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. God is good. The Lord wants you healed. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. The devil jumped on you. Uh -huh, and, he did. Yeah. But we bind that foul thing. In the name of thank Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for the word of God. And Lord, we speak to our dear sister and call her blessed and well and whole. And any demons that has occupied our physical body, we command it to release her and let her go. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it. And we believe that she'll live long and strong, healthy, wealthy, and wise all the days of her life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. People say, can, can a Christian have a devil? Absolutely. But not in your spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. Amen. Amen. Well, the spirit man can't have a devil. Because right. light and darkness can't be in the same place at the same time. Amen. But it cer certainly can be in, in your mind, your mind, will, and emotions. And man, I've, I've ministered to a lot of people over the years had devils in their, in, their, in their soulish man. Amen. So in the soulish man, you can have demons. In the physical body, you can have demons. Amen. Pray like the, the, the physical sickness or ailment might, might be a devil. Right. Amen. Like cancer, I believe that's a devil. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Cancer is a devil. And so, uh, because we know it's certainly not from God. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah, a, a Christian can have a devil, but not in the spirit. Yeah. Amen. In the spirit realm, praise God, there's uh, life and peace, goodness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, glory to God. So you, you need to recognize that, you know, we uh, uh, casting the devil out of people, you know, all, ever since we've been in the ministry, there was a woman came to us and said, I want you to come to my house. I, uh, you know, my son, I think that, that uh, there's a devil in his, in his room. And once again, anybody can do this. We all ought to be able to cast out demons. The Bible tells us that we can do that. Uh, believers can lay hands on the sick. Well, they'll cast out devils. That's, right. that's the first thing that's on the list. Amen. Casting out devils. Amen. Amen. So there was a woman come and said, come to our house. You know, we, are, we, we got a devil in the house. And so we went over to her house. Amen. And we, we prayed a little bit, you know, uh, in, in the house and 
And uh, I said, well, where's his room? Where's the boy's room? I reckon he's a teenager. And so, uh, so she took us back to this room and it said, this is where, where the devil, all the activity is in this room. And, uh, you know, the, the thing was, in this room, there was all kind of posters of demons and dragons and figurines, you know, just all kind of demonic looking stuff. And I said, well, the first thing you need to do is get rid of all this garbage. I'm going to get it out of this room. Amen. All, all the, the demons and the gargoyles and, and everything, get, get it out of the room. Well, you know, and we prayed, but that lady got mad at us for saying that her son had a devil. And I didn't say her son had a devil. Amen. But he could have had a devil. Amen. But she got mad at us anyway for, for thinking that there was a, a devil, you know, in their house like that. And she's going to call me over there. Amen. And, and they, they left the church. Amen. I guess they still got the devil. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. But, but, you know, having uh, things that, that, that uh, we all not have. Now, I don't believe that, you know, one time Sheila had a, had a frog in the, in the kitchen, a ceramic frog, you know, there with its mouth open. And you put a scrubber, dish scrubber in there. Amen. Well, somebody come in and said, well, that, don't you know that's a demonic, that frog? Listen, all frogs are not demonic. <laughs> that frog held a dish rag, amen? <laughs> amen. <laughs> but, but, but people get strained at a gnat and swallow a camel. Amen. You know, they get out of one ditch into the other ditch. Yes, then, the, you know, there's people that think there's a devil behind every bush. Uh, Normal Hay says they are. <laughs> no, but there's not a devil behind every bush, and I don't go looking for devils. But if I confront them, I know what to do with them. I know what to do with them. I'm, we're not afraid of them. Praise God. Turn your neighbor and say, I'm not afraid of the devil. And so what happens is people begin to get a revelation, re revelation that there is a devil and demons. Amen. But they don't lord it over us. I mean, we lord it over them. Amen. Amen. We put the devil under our feet. He's under our feet. Praise the Lord. Under our feet. And so that's where we need to leave him, under our feet. Yeah. Amen. So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The word salvation means safety, soundness, healing, preservation. Preservation. So that, that's more than just going to heaven. That's right. So the gospel is the power of God unto, the, unto salvation to all that believe. So he's got to have the believing part. Right. Believing part. So when you read the Bible, you believe the Bible. You can tell if you believe the Bible is are you acting on the Bible? That's right. That's right. Are you doing what it says to do? Right. Amen. Are you acting on the Word of God? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you've got to be a doer of the Word and not just a hearer only. Amen. Praise God. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We found out the truth yes. and the truth made us free. Amen. Hallelujah. So... David, stand up. Can you stand up? Stand up. Just where you are. You don't have to come up here. Everybody stretch forth your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe our brother is healed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. It has to go from him. Any demonic activity that's tried to attach itself to his body, we command it to release him and let it go in the name of Jesus. Healed and whole and well free from any demonic activity in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, David and I, we've, we've fought a lot of devils together. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we won them. That's right, too. We've never been defeated. Amen. Never been defeated. Hallelujah. So God is good. Amen. So, are you ready to fight some devils? Yes. Amen. Praise God. So, once you get a revelation of that, first of all, you're not afraid. Amen. Don't let fear dictate to you. Amen. Don't be afraid of the devil, because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. So, the greater one lives in us. Amen. Amen. So, we have the power to overcome all devils. Amen. Amen. Jesus gave 
us, his disciples, all of his disciples, That's right. over all devils. Power over devils. Power over all devils. Amen. All devils being all, all devils. devils. That's right. Amen. But then I, th I think it's in Luke chapter 5 or Mark chapter 5, you know, where he goes and heals uh, Jairus' daughter. Amen. And uh, then on down through there, wh wh where was it? It said, uh, any anyway, so uh, I'll skip that. Got it. <laughs> Amen. On the way, that lady stopped No, 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 no. no. Okay. Anyway, that's not, that's not what I was thinking about. Okay. Anyway, but we have power over all devils. I know what it was. They gave, you know, Jesus gave his disciples power over all devils. Amen. And then shortly after that, shortly after that, uh, after that, uh, you know, they confronted this devil and the boy brings, a man brings his boy to Jesus and cast, cast the devil out of my son. For it casts him at times in the fire and all that. And Jesus, uh, and, and Jesus, you know, he, uh, you know, the disciples said, well, you know, we brought him to thy disciples to cast the devil out, but they couldn't do it. And if you can do anything, you help us. Amen. So, you know, they said if you could, what does it mean? He'd already give them devils. Not devils, but he'd already give them uh, power over all devils. And so uh, you've got to exercise the power. You've got to exercise the power that God gives you or just right. what good does it do? That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. But... Uh, he, 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 shortly thereafter, he gave them power over all devils. Amen. But the, but the devil, we see, find the devils resisting. And Jesus said, where's your son? Bring your son to me. And the son, he brings the son. And on the way to Jesus, the boy falls down, foaming in his mouth, you know, having a seizure of some sort. Amen. And, and then Jesus just says, shut up and come out of here. Yeah. Right. Just that simple. Yeah. Amen. So, that I believe the same tactic was used with the, with the apostles as it was used against Jesus. But Jesus knew he had the power. Yeah. Amen. He had the power. And they had the same power because Jesus had already given them that yeah, power right. to okay. cast out Amen. devils. Amen. Amen. And so, but they got fearful. And that's what most people do. If somebody were to fall down in front of you, start foaming at the mouth, well, I can, I can heal a toe ache or a headache but I don't know about casting out these devils. Right, right. That's where a lot of people are. Right. The devil scares them yes. into thinking it ain't going to work with you. Yes. Amen. Yes. But Amen. you want to give the devil a black eye. Amen. Amen. Show him who's, who's boss. Amen. The greater one lives in us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. So a lot of times people are praying and they're praying for a sickness, and a lot of times it's just the devil. Yeah. Get rid of the devil, and you get rid of the sickness. Amen. 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 Glory to God. God is good, isn't He? Yes. 